forecast to re-strengthen. It's going to make a very curved, convoluted pass across the Gulf. It looks like it's going to make landfall in southwest Louisiana, not far from where Hurricane Laura made landfall a month ago as a Cat 4. However, Laura had a tiny little wind field to it, a very powerful, very tiny wind field. The wind in Houston from Laura a month or so ago was, was very minimal. This is going to be different. This will be a weaker wind speed. We think it'll be Cat 2, but we think the winds, the wind field will be so much larger that even being on the weak side of a weaker hurricane than Laura was, Delta is going to give us some pretty good wind conditions across Southeast Texas, especially near the coast. So it's going to be close enough to be interesting going into Friday in particular. So Hurricane Delta, Thursday through Friday is when we feel the impacts. What are the impacts here? Thursday, a building northeast breeze, 10 to 15 tomorrow, 25, maybe a gust to 30 and above. That's in the immediate Houston area. So it's breezy, especially on Friday, it's during the day. And then Galveston, a building northeast breeze, you know, tomorrow, 25 to 30, going into Friday, 45, maybe gust to 50, possible uh, on exposed area on Galveston, Bolivar Peninsula, and the west side of Galveston Bay. So get ready, there could be some power outage issues near the coast as Delta approaches and goes through on Friday. This time lapse uh, from Katie Memorial Herman, our weather bug cam uh, out there in Katie, TXU Energy giving us the camera shot. You see the clouds coming in from the south, those high cirrus clouds, those are clouds coming from the storm. Now today we saw the high cirrus clouds coming in from south to north, but at the surface we had a northeast breeze. If you ever see high cirrus clouds coming off the Gulf of Mexico with a north northeast breeze and it's hurricane season, you better go check the satellite because you probably have a tropical storm out here in the Gulf, which is exactly what we've got. We've got a hurricane. That's the center of the hurricane. But you can already see there's an outer rain band not too far from the Louisiana and Texas coast. And you can see the high clouds that came in from south to north today. And then there's the wind wrapping around from north to south. And that's what we saw on that time lapse. And that's how we know there's probably a tropical storm brewing out here. You can see the high clouds moving in, have that light northeast breeze. It's only five to 10 out there this evening. It's a very light northeast breeze, but those are the outer fringes of the circulation around Delta. Now, Delta weakens significantly as across the Yucatan, but even now, see how that inner core is expanding? Watch that once again, it's expanding. So that's called the central dense overcast, and you see it expanding like that. You know you've got a system that is now re-strengthening, and in fact, it is. Winds are up from 85 at 4 o'clock to now 90 mile an hour sustained winds at 7 o'clock. So it is already beginning to get reorganized after really getting hammered as it went across the Yucatan. Remember, in this spot last night, we had winds of 140, went across the Yucatan, now down to a Cat 1 with winds at 90, but they're beginning to ramp back up. And conditions over the Gulf are very conducive for quick development. And so we think this is gonna go to a two, maybe even a three over the open Gulf before weakening back to a strong two and making landfall with winds of 105 miles an hour, most likely here on the Southwest Louisiana coast Houston, Galveston, we are not in the cone. We are in that yellow area. That is a tropical storm watch. That means, yeah, we could have tropical storm force winds on the coast and the bay of the upper Texas coast as we head into Friday. And then these are hurricane watches closer to Beaumont. They could have hurricane force conditions there closer to the Texas-Louisiana border. So why is it moving in that curved pattern like it is? Couple of things. It's caught up in the flow around that ridge of high pressure. And approaching from the west on Friday will be this frontal boundary, and that's a trough. So you've got winds flowing like that around the trough, around the ridge, and you can see where the escape route is. It's right between the two, and so that's why all the models are predicting this to move up to the northeast eventually, and that's why it takes it right into southwest Louisiana. So when we look at all the different computer models, the spaghetti plots are very tightly clustered right into southwest Louisiana, maybe a little bit east of Lake Charles. But when you, when you see them clustered like that, it gives you a little more confidence that the forecast you're looking at is probably one that is going to pan out. This is still too close for comfort for me here in Houston, Galveston. So we're watching it like a hawk, and you need to as well, just in case Mother Nature decides to throw us a curveball and adjust that forecast. Now the winds, so the wind field, 
The yellow area, those are areas expecting tropical storm force winds, and that does include Galveston Bay, Galveston and the Ballroom Peninsula and Chambers, and a little bit of Liberty County as well. In the yellow area, we estimate you could have winds 39 to 73 miles an hour. I don't think we're going to have them in the 70s, but I do think we could have wind gusts in the 50s. Galveston, Bolivar Peninsula, High Island, Chambers County, maybe even the west side of the bay as well. As the wind comes over, the open water of the bay can accelerate into places like uh, League City, Texas City, San Leon, Dickinson. So heads up on the west side of the bay, NASA Clear Lake, you could have some strong wind gusts, especially on Friday. Here is the wind field, and you can see it now encompasses almost the entire Gulf of Mexico. So after being a tiny little wind field yesterday, it went across the land mass. That expanded the wind field. When wind fields expand, it's like the ice skater. Instead of pulling their arms in, they let their arms out, and that slows down the circulation, but it broadens the circulation. So, so the scope of the winds has expanded tremendously over the past 24 hours. That's of interest because in this position, and this is when the storm could regenerate to Cat 3, look at where that main wind field is located. That is, that's about 250, 300 miles in diameter. That's a huge area of strong tropical force and hurricane force winds. This is Thursday, this is tomorrow. We get an increasing northeast breeze here. 10 to 15 or so, 20, 25 on the coast. Now we go into Friday. As it approaches, you know, if the storm does sit in this position on its curve heading back into southwest Louisiana, that's going to be awfully close to the upper Texas coast. And you can see we're on the edge of those stronger winds. And that's why Galveston, some of the models are forecasting 50 mile an hour gust in Galveston going into Friday afternoon and Friday night. So from lunchtime through the evening on Friday, we could have some very gusty winds in Galveston. And also even in the Houston area, we could have some wind gusts 30, 35 in some of the rain bands. If and when they come through, that's where the strongest winds are always located. And then the storm continues its trek into Louisiana with the strongest winds moving a little bit further away from us. But still, that's going to be a pretty good north breeze on Friday. Friday is going to be a very interesting day to be a weather watcher. Okay, so what do the computers say about the actual forecasting a wind speed? So this is tomorrow, going into tomorrow evening, winds pick up to 30 miles an hour or so on the Galveston coast maybe 15 to 20 miles an hour in the immediate Houston area. Nothing too big and bad, but you'll notice, oh, I'm getting this northeast breeze. That's the northern edge of that wind field. We go into Friday. So this is going into Friday afternoon. And the, the computers are suggesting, and I looked at several of the different global models, and they are suggesting, yeah, we could see wind gusts of 50 in Galveston on Friday afternoon and evening. That's strong enough to knock out some power. You could have some limbs coming down, some branches, some palm fronds coming down, take out a power line here and there. I expect we're going to see at least some scattered power outages, Galveston, Galveston County, Chambers County, and across the bay. Maybe more than just a few scattered power outages. So that's something to, to, to keep in mind going into Friday afternoon and Friday evening. Now in Houston, north wind at 25. It's been my experience. I've seen it many times. You've got to get winds gusting above 40 to really begin to see a power outage become a threat for Harris County, Houston, and the inland areas. And at the moment, I don't see any widespread gusts above 40 miles an hour in the Houston area or most of Southeast Texas. So I think our power outage threat inland is low, but on the coast and around the bay, it is much higher as you get closer to the center of that storm as it heads towards south and west Louisiana. Rain is not going to be much of a threat, although we could see an inch or two Galveston. Notice how the cutoff right there along I-45. East of I-45, you got a chance for some heavier downpours. Beaumont could see four or five inches. And you see, of course, the heavier rains right along near the center of the storm as it moves in toward Lake Charles and up toward Alexandria. So we're not looking at a flood threat here. And the storm will be moving rapidly as well. Here's the way I've depicted this in the seven day. Tomorrow, 30% chance we could see a, a rain band come in. Could be some scattered showers. Download the app and get the radar right in your hand and all the updates as well. And then, oh, and so winds tomorrow northeast at 11 or so, maybe up to 15. That's for Houston proper. They'll be a little stronger on the coast. Friday, that's Houston. North winds at 27. And that's a breezy day. Uh, Gulf Watch, 60% chance for rain, better chance for some of those rain bands to come in, especially near the coast and east of I-45. 
and then after the storm finally makes landfall, it pulls out very quickly. Uh, we get sunny skies and a northwest and southwest breeze and very warm near 90 both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we get a, a frontal boundary coming in Monday night of next week, making it gorgeously comfortable. Again, fall weather, perfect fall weather, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. So that is everything on Delta, its approach and how we expect things to play out here. Again, wind threat, tropical storm force winds, yes, on the coast, Galveston, Bolivar Peninsula, Chambers County, west side of Galveston Bay, eastern Liberty County. Yeah, and you could have some power outage issues there Friday afternoon, Friday night because of that. We're watching it very carefully. We'll have an updated forecast cone, updated spaghetti plots, updated wind forecast, everything updated, and we'll have it for you on the 10 o'clock news tonight on the TV side. So we'll see you for a live update on TV at 10.